Hi there! I hope you enjoyed the last video. This time we are gonna deepen into one of the less known features of the data card generator. It is the VVR timeline, a chronology of the Pigeon visual range engagement, so to say. In short, it is a series of concepts ruled by the distance to an air-to-air -air thread that dictate the actions and decisions to be taken during the VVR engagement flow. All this rings like a rule of thumb, but becomes increasingly complex in execution, as the enemies rarely collaborate with our plan, making the flow ever-changing, something to what we need to adapt. On top of this dynamism, there is the fact that different theories of criteria exist, with different timelines for the US Air Force, US Navy and foreign air forces, becoming something really confusing. I've been into flight sims for more than 20 years now, studying all support material and watching tons of videos. However, suffice to say that my qualifications to talk about this topic are less than appropriate, and my experience almost always ends in the same way. So I had no choice but to resort to people that know the most. No, I meant about aerial combat. Well, okay, but I meant real-world experts. Indeed, the tiny bit I got to know about this, and my attempt at, a, at an explanation here, I owe them to Chicho. In the 5 years virtual flight group, we have the luxury of counting with him, a real-world instructor pilot, former Mirage F1 and Eurofighter pilot, and avid Zimmer. With his infinite patience, he kindly explained to me how all this works. Let's imagine this situation, patrolling over the sea, when we receive an AWACS call similar to this. Expected threat is Su-27, armed with the R-27, and we are assuming them coming at block 4 altitude. For each 10,000 feet more, we can add 2 nautical miles to the timeline distances, another way around if they come lower. In the program, you can generate timelines for different threats and altitude blocks. So first, we need to extract the info and build our situational awareness picture. There is a hostile group 20 miles from Bullseye in 080 bearing from it, flying at 35,000 feet in our direction. First step in the timeline tells us to identify and locate the enemy. In this example, position is given relative to the Bullseye and we determine them to be 50 miles away from us. Next, we assess the situation according to rules of engagement, whether the bandits are a threat to our flight at 50 nautical miles, if they continue flying towards us, they will soon be a factor, or other friendly flights. As you see, they pose a serious threat for these eight hands. With all the info, a decision is taken, this case committing to the bandits, and it is communicated to the AWACS. From this moment, all that matters are the bandits and monitoring distances. So let's declutter. Before reaching 37 miles, we perform MELD, adjusting rather scope and scan pattern, locating the bandits and sorting them within the flag. Sorry within the flight. So, lead is taking the lead bandit and number two is taking the trailer. Next, two closely linked concepts that sometimes swap their order. Defensive action point is the point where we should initiate defensive maneuvering to hinder enemy missiles task. It might be cranking, as we'll show next, or waves, periodically changing direction, like drawing waves in the air, to bleed potential incoming missiles energy. 
minimum shoot distance is the point where we, before which we should have fired our first Fox 3 to keep the initiative, allowing us to support it until it becomes autonomous, the pitbull, and yet not crossing the MAR. More on this later. In this example, we launch a Fox 3 at defensive action point and then crank right. As you see, this makes the incoming missile's path longer, decreasing its effective range. Bandits, however, collaborate with us by flying straight, so we assume that we got one splash. Before 22 miles distance, we should reassess the situation and decide if we go cold to rebuild our picture and recommit later, or continue pressing, as we got one confirmed splash, and even more, there were friendly flights involved, we decide here to press. From this point on, we need to develop a fixation with the concept of MAR, or M-A-R, minimum abort range. We should never cross this line, in this case 20 miles from the bandit, unless we are positively sure he does not have Fox 3 left or he's in a position to employ them, as that would put us into the no escape zone. Our goal is to put, uh, sorry, to put a Fox 3 in the air with time enough to perform a pump maneuver, a 180 degrees turn and extend. As you see, this allows us to escape the incoming missile while the bandit is splashed because he continued pressing. And that's it. Now you know how to use the timelines generated by the data card generator, which are a mix of concepts taken from different services documentation, real world and seeming experience. Please excuse my mistakes and I hope you enjoyed this video as well. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel or giving the uh, like to the video. That really helps spreading it and hopefully dragging more people into our hobby. Thank you very much.